In today's video I'm going to make soup for a week's worth of lunches with minimal preparation and maximum variety. When I had an office job, especially in the winter, a nice bowl of soup was often just what I wanted for lunch. But who wants to prepare soup every day? There are, I think, three approaches to batch made soup. Let me know in the comments if there are more I haven't thought of. Firstly, you can just make a massive batch of soup in one go. Throw a load of vegetables and stuff into a pot, cook it for a while, portion it out, freeze some, chill some, and so on. But you end up eating the same soup every day, which might not be what you want. Now, if you have the freezer space, I suppose you could overcome that by making several batches of different soups and eating them in rotation. Another approach is the perpetual stew pot. You start by making a pot of soup, then you dish some out, add in some new ingredients, cook it again, dish out some more, add more stuff, cook again, and so on. There are a few reasons why it might not be a good idea to do this. Firstly, food safety. Not so much about reheating, but rather about the total duration for which the soup is in that balmy warm zone where bacteria thrive. It might not even matter that you're heating it up again afterwards, because some food poisoning pathogens create heat-resistant toxins as waste products. But even if that doesn't happen, it does mean a proportion of the mixture is going to be very overcooked, which could be lovely, but might not. And in any case, the most obvious reason not to do this is every time you cook the whole pot, you're expending extra energy heating up the portions you're not eating this time. This might have made more sense when this was a cauldron over a wood fire that had to be burning all the time anyway. Maybe not quite so much sense when heat is metered and paid for and prices are not going down. The third approach, which is the one I'm going to look at today, is what I call pick and mix soup. Now, I'm sure I didn't invent this because at its heart, it's just about using leftovers. But what we're going to do is make a bunch of leftovers on purpose. I'll start by prepping a whole load of vegetables. Carrots, parsnips, butternut squash, red pepper, a couple of onions, some potatoes, some sweet potatoes, and a few sticks of celery. All this goes into a big roasting pan with a little splash of oil, a light sprinkling of salt, not too much, then into the oven. Prep time so far is 20, maybe 25 minutes. Set a timer for an hour or so and then go and do something else. I got a bit distracted actually, so mine came out a little bit frazzled on some parts, but they're okay, I'll just pick off the burnt bits. These vegetables can cook in the oven alongside something else like Sunday dinner, a cake or a loaf of bread or any other meal you might be cooking to maximise the utility of the power used to run the oven. So those vegetables are all done. In fact, mine are a little bit over. I probably should have buried the more delicate and sugary things in the middle of the other vegetables. But anyway, most of it's okay. After it's cooled down, I'll pack it away in some containers with lids. I'm not blending or chopping or mixing anything at this point. Just pack it up and into the fridge. It will keep like this for a whole week quite easily. That's the main work done and still only about half an hour of it in total, including a bit of washing up. Then to prepare the soup, which when I was in the office job, I would do the night before. I would pick a selection of vegetables, cut them to size or mash them and add them to my soup container. Then some stock, which can be made from stock powder or cubes or concentrate, or in my case, some instant curry sauce paste together with some freshly made stock that I just happened to be making that day, but hot water or stock made up from powder would have worked just fine. A really generous spoonful of my homemade odds and ends pickle. Other things would work here like mango chutney, Branston pickle, even a dash of HP sauce, which has a similar sort of flavour profile to a British style chutney. If you've never tried adding a bit of pickle to something that's going to be curry flavoured, it's worth a try. The acidity and the sweetness both work really well. So that's five minutes prep to make my soup and it's done. I'll actually be eating this in the evening and Jenny wants something different so we'll kind of drop the pretense of this being prepared in advance for the office but the principle works the same. All of these things will stand once prepared and all of them will warm up just fine in the microwave. So for Jenny, carrot, potato, sweet potato, butternut squash, all diced up, some stock and a pinch of salt, some peas straight from the freezer and while that's warming up I'll just slice some bread. And in five minutes prep time each, probably would have been less than ten in total if I'd done these two together, we've both got two generous portions of quite different soups. A winter vegetable broth for Jenny and a veg curry soup for me. Starting with those cooked vegetables and some stock and flavourings from the cupboard, plus the crafty addition of leftovers and frozen items, the possibilities are really broad. For example, the next day Jenny fancied a smooth, thick sort of soup, so butternut squash, potato and carrot again, some stock and seasoning, but this time blend it smooth. Five minutes prep and there's a nice thick soup to go with some more of that bread. A little bit of grated cheese on top there, why not? I fancied something spicy, so onions, sweet potatoes, red pepper, blend that with a bit of water, a pinch of salt and a dash of hot sauce, then half a tin of baked beans, left over from a midweek evening meal. Five minutes prep again, serving this with some chilli flakes on top. I'm leaving accompaniments as an exercise for the viewer. Bread is the obvious choice for soup, but I'm going to crumble some crackers into my spicy bean soup today. But how much variety can you get from this method? Well, here are a few other examples. A potato, some milk and a bit of stock powder. Blend that, then another potato, diced. 
onions, carrots, parsnips and a handful of frozen corn. Heat that up and we've got something a bit like chowder. If you had some leftover smoked fish or maybe some cooked bacon or chorizo, it would be a really super addition to this, but it's good enough just like this. Or this. Diced carrots, celery, onion, red pepper and parsnips. Half a stock cube and some water. A fresh tomato, diced. A little squad of ketchup. Now don't hate me, it's basically just cooked tomatoes with vinegar, sugar and spices. A pinch of paprika and a handful of cooked pasta from midweek leftovers and some torn up infinite basil. This is not minestrone soup, but what is it? It's really good for something that took only five minutes of preparation. Or this, butternut squash, sweet potato and a spoonful of peanut butter. Blend with some water, taste for seasoning and adjust because that peanut butter might be salty. Sweet chilli sauce and chilli flakes, a bit of diced red pepper and, well, not really sure what to call this one, but it is delicious. Bit of natural yoghurt on that one, I think, since I'm at home for this meal. Or this, parsnips, potatoes, onions, water and stock powder. A little bit of grated cheese, blend and then a handful of frozen peas. Easy peasy, cheesy parsnip soup. A pack of mini cheddars on the side or on top for added cheesiness. Now if you have enough containers you could just prepare all of these assorted soups in advance from the selection of cooked ingredients and freeze or chill them ready to go. But I prefer to make it the night before because I don't always know what I'll fancy too far in advance. Of course you're not limited to the vegetables I happen to use here. Other root vegetables like celeriac or turnip would also work and also other things like fennel or cauliflower or mushrooms can be pre-cooked in a batch and stored for up to a week for assembly into pick and mix soup. Green vegetables like spinach or cabbage can go in there too, but raw at the assembly stage. If you shred cabbage really, really finely, it will cook in the time it takes just to reheat the soup the next day. And that's it. The basic formula of whatever vegetables you pick from the prepared batch, whatever leftovers you happen to have, whatever stock or liquid you like, whatever spices and seasonings you fancy, and whatever additional bits you can raid from your cupboards can yield a huge variety of possible results from a relatively small amount of effort in preparation. And it's reasonably cheap, as healthy as you like, and sure, a tin of soup can be perfectly decent. There are some really good canned soups out there, so no shade on that. But there is satisfaction in homemade that comes not only from the feeling that you made it yourself, but also because you can tailor it exactly to your own preferences. I hope this has been interesting. Please do share your suggestions and recipes in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.